The hangman's been out for a while ever since his failed return to featherweight. The Kiwi fighter is a fan favorite who's won us all over with his witty charm and insane toughness inside the octagon. Dan made it into the news again when he was asked about a future opponent for his fellow city kickboxing teammate. We'll be looking at what Dan had to say about the middleweight contender and everything going on in the MMA world. First off, what did Dan have to say about the UFC 276 main event? Dan was asked in an interview about his teammate Israel Adesanya's opponent, Jared Kananier. And let's just say that Dan was pretty brutally honest. Hooker seemed to think that it was a silly fight for his teammate and that the stylistic matchup was tailor-made for him. According to him, Jared's just another muscular striker like Paulo Costa. Before Stylebender's bout with Costa, they were both undefeated, and many people thought it would be Adesanya's toughest test. Izzy went on to pick Costa apart from the outside, and knocked him out in the second round. According to Hooker, the Kananier fight would have played out exactly like that. Dan seems to think that Kananier isn't known for his takedowns, wrestling, or scrambling ability. He's just another striker. And when you're a striker standing in front of Adesanya with no grappling threat, you're always gonna lose. Jared did have that KO power, but who doesn't in that division? Dan's the type of guy who speaks his mind, and some of the things can be taken the wrong way. There's no reason to believe that he was against the idea of Jared fighting for the title. He was clearly the next in line after knocking out Derek Brunson. But despite all that, most people were expecting the champ to defend his title pretty easily because of the way those two matched up. Can't be mad at Dan for saying what many of us were thinking. Next up, how did the fans react to the main event? It seems like the Stylebender has been having a hard time getting his opponents to engage in his last few fights. If you see his past opponents like Kelvin Gastelum or Whitaker in the first fight, they all thought that the way to beat him was to get on the inside and make it ugly. Well, that plan didn't really work out for them. It was Yoel Romero who had a different strategy, which involved staying on the outside and cruising his way to a decision. That way you'll lose, but take minimal damage. The fight would be close and competitive. And who knows, maybe you might even get the nod. Long story short, that's been the strategy of his last few opponents. Needless to say, the fights haven't been very interesting. It's usually the champ dictating the pace, and outpointing his opponent from a distance. There's very little damage done by either fighter, and the champ defends his belt via unanimous decision. Going into the Jared fight, Adesanya promised us a performance like the Costa fight, which it certainly wasn't. You can see many people leaving the arena in the middle of the fight. People were pretty disappointed by the way it played out. Fans took to social media and started calling Adesanya the most boring champion in the UFC. As the champ would say, we're living in the TikTok era, and it's all about the recency bias. Fans only remember your last performance, but for Adesanya, he hasn't had a finish in two years. Izzy is a smart fighter. He wouldn't engage and get himself in trouble if the other guy isn't willing to. Perhaps it'll take another grudge match for him to really go out of his way to find a finish. Up next, walking out to The Undertaker's theme. One thing we can always expect from an Izzy fight is the epic walkouts he plans. The guy came dancing into the octagon before dethroning Bobby Knuckles for the title. This time time around, he had planned to walk out like the dead man. The iconic entrance music of The Undertaker played and Adesanya came out wearing the black hat and carrying the ashes which were supposedly Jared's. The UFC did a great job of making it even more epic by having smoke machines. You could hear the fanboy inside Daniel Cormier wanting to scream with excitement. Love him or hate him, he knows how to make an entrance. Next up, UFC fighters talk about Izzy's performance. Daniel Cormier came to Adesanya Sonya's defense and said that the opponent is more to blame than the champ himself. These guys have got an opportunity to win the world title, but they're comfortable in cruising to a decision. It takes two to tango, and you can't put all the blame on Adesanya. Henry Cayudo said that the UFC should stop hyping Adesanya so much, as his performance doesn't do justice to the hype behind him. An old friend of Izzy, John Jones, also had a few words to say to the champ in a tweet, where he referred to Izzy as Elsa, a line we all wish we hadn't heard before. Francis Ngannou
Keanu came to his friend's defense saying that while Johnny Bones has been sitting out, Adesanya has defended his belt five times. Jones responded by saying that his legacy is so far ahead of everyone that even if he sits out for another two years, the two of them wouldn't be able to get to his level. Can't say he's wrong. Now for the big news. Chris Pratt is not impressed by Izzy's performance. UFC 276 had plenty of stars in the building. More than half the fighters in the pound for pound list were in the arena. Along with the fighters, we had plenty of celebrities, including MCU star Chris Pratt, who was there to promote the new Thor movie. After the pay-per-view was over, Pratt was asked about the fights and what he thought about Izzy's performance. He said that he wasn't a big fan of how Adesanya talked so much leading up to the fight, only to do a little pitter-patter and winning a unanimous decision. The Guardians of the Galaxy star clarified that he's just a fan and he knows nothing about fighting. He just gave his opinion because he was asked about it. If you know Israel Adesanya, you know he won't be the bigger man in these scenarios. The champ went on to tweet that he could do what Chris Pratt does, but not the other way around. He went on to claim that Chris Pratt is just a fan, whereas he's the man. Chris replied to Izzy's tweet and apologized for his comments. The fans showed a lot of support to Chris Pratt for being honest about how he felt, as many people shared the same opinion as him. Now, in other related news. First up, Alex Pereira is the next in line. The main card of UFC 276 was pretty interesting, as it also had a fight whose winner might potentially fight for the title next. It was Alex Pereira's first top 10 opponent, and it was the most unfiltered guy in the UFC, Sean Strickland. Many fans could see what the UFC was trying to do when they made that fight. Pereira has two wins over Stylebender in kickboxing. He even KO'd him brutally the last time they fought, so it's natural for the company to try and book that fight as soon as they can. Fortunately for Pereira, he got matched up with Strickland, who was a pretty favorable matchup for him. Alex Pereira got the first round KO with his signature left hook, the same punch he knocked out Izzy with. If all goes well, this is the next fight to make. Remember when we talked about a grudge match that'd make Adesanya look for a finish? Well folks, this might be it. Next up, Henry Cayuto is looking for a fight. Triple C made his way back into the USADA testing pool a few months ago. Cayuto has been calling everyone out since the day he retired. His top priority is to face Alexander Volkanovsky for the featherweight title to become C4. Unfortunately for him, he's not the biggest draw, and no one's really lining up to fight him. He also has his eye on the bantamweight champ Alia Main Sterling, which would be an interesting contest due to both of them having elite grappling. Last week, Henry called out Sean O'Malley, which he said would be a tune-up fight for him. Cayudo even interrupted O'Malley in a post-fight interview. Looks like he'll take on anyone at this point. And finally, Adesanya gets his USADA jacket. In the International Fight Week, it was announced that Israel Adesanya would be getting his USADA jacket for 50 successful tests. Right now, the champ is at 52 negative tests. Previously, there have been some rumors of Adesanya taking PEDS mainly due to the way his chest looks, which is considered a side effect of taking steroids. The champ announced that he'd give anyone who has concrete evidence of him taking steroids $3 million. Of course, he also had to mention John Jones at some point. Izzy said that he's never been scared of getting tested, and he would never hide under the cage. All he does is fight in it. Who saw that coming, huh? That's a wrap for this video. What did you think of Dan's statement regarding the middleweight title fight? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.